Hello, my name is Cynic and welcome to the channel. This video is a tutorial on how you can manually mod Mountain Blade to Banlord. So if that's why you're here, stick around and then you should know how to do it by the end of it. So you're going to need three things in order to do it properly. One, you're going to need to go on the nexusmods.com website and make an account. Two, you're going to need to go to the 7-zip.org website and download the relevant EXE or MSI, whichever is possible. It's, can you even play Banlord on a Mac? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, who plays games on a Mac anyway? And then the third requirement is, of course, Mount and Blade 2 Banlord. Installed via Steam or alternative methods, you're going to need to have it fully installed. Right, so the first thing is that you need to know what version of Mountain Blade you are playing on. So if we go to the Steam version, you can manually change from the, uh, the most recent version to a previous version. For example, I am, my last playthrough was on 1.6.5 and I'm going to manually change it by right clicking on the game, going to properties, going to the betas tab and then select the beta you would like to opt into. So if you want to have the most recent version, you would click none. If you want to have a prior version, then you would simply select that version. So for instance, I am now going to be playing on 1.7.0 and not the 1.7.1 beta. So I'm going to just simply select 1.7.0 and that will then start the update and then it will uh, download and install that version. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have done that right away because it just took 15 minutes to actually update the game to 1.7.0. But another way of checking what version you have, if you can't see on this, um, on this properties and beta version, is simply to run the game on the launch screen. You can see the version at the bottom left hand corner. So E1.7.0 point several other decimals, but the main one is the, uh, the first three. If you want to see what mods that you have currently installed, you can simply go to mods. So these sandbox core, sandbox custom battle, story mode, and native, these are essentially modules that the game itself requires to run. These are the game, essentially, and anything else would be additional to these essential mods or modules. Okay, so now you know how to change the version of Banlord that you're playing, you know how to check which version that you're actually using, and that these versions align with the bottom left-hand corner. See, we're playing the game 1.7.0, and thus these native modules need to correspond with that version, right? Okay, so we want to mod Banlord, not check the version that we currently have. Fair enough. So let's get out of here. Nexus Mods is a sort of conglomeration of different mods for different games. And of course, while there are many different games that we can choose from, we are focusing on Mountain Blade 2 Banlord. So if we click on Mountain Blade 2 Banlord, we will see all of the mods available for us to download on Nexus Mods. A quick exploration of the, uh, the possible navigation options. I like to see what's hot in the last 30 days. Kind of give us a good idea of um, what's trending, what's new, and if anything is worth downloading. So because my next playthrough is going to be focusing on the Eagle Rising mod, I'm simply going to be demonstrating how to install mods using that mod as an example. So in the search bar, I'm going to type Eagle Rising. And the first one is the original mod. So you can see it has about 280,000 downloads and 3,000 and 3,700 endorsements. So it's a pretty popular mod. Right, so we're going to click on that. Generally, the more developed mods, such as the Eagle Rising mod, will show you a bit of detail about what the mod entails, where it plans to go, as well as certain um, inst installation and uh, update instructions and uh, compatibility issues, mods that will work with it, mods that won't work with it. Anyway, you get the idea. If you want to see how the mod looks like, go to the images and we'll Generally, they will show a depiction of the of um, the changes that the mod brings to the game, right? But um, you might know about that, so I'm going simply to the installation of these mods, right? So we go to Files, and now you need to make sure 
that the file of the mod that you're downloading corresponds with the version of the game that you have, okay? So we have Eagle Rising Bannerlord 1.7.0 and now we know that the Bannerlord that I'm using now is Bannerlord 1.7.0 because we've just made sure that the Steam version corresponds to this version that we need. Now you might ask the question, will a mod that's not made for a specific version of Bannerlord still work on it? For instance, if we had a Bannerlord version 1.7.5, would this mod work on it? The answer to that is generally no. But sometimes it does work. With the, the, mod, the mod creator will just choose not to update it, they will just disappear. And the mod is left in uh, an intermediate state of maybe it will work and maybe it won't work. One way to check this is to go into the posts. Generally, people will uh, complain if it's not working for one version or the other. But as we can see that this version corresponds exactly to our Bannerlord version, we shouldn't have any issues. Let's just say that you have a version of Bannerlord that you like to play. And there is a mod that is a version above it or several versions above it, you can generally go to the old files and try to find the um, corresponding Bannerlord version, right? So the more the mods that have been here for a longer amount of time will generally allow that. So for instance, Eagle Rising has been around since the 1.5s, um, which is quite a few updates ago. And, that, and if you get the Bannerlord version that corresponds with it, then you, it should be able to work. So let's go for the assumption that we have the Bannerlord version that corresponds to the Bannerlord mod version. We're going to be using the manual download method. Right? You click on manual download and then mods that have prerequisite requirements, generally these will pop up and say, hang on, before you download this mod, you need to download these mods first. There are several mods that are generally kind of required for other mods. These are Harmony, Butterlib, Mod Managers, and things like that. By clicking on the hyperlink here, Harmony, it will take us to Harmony's page. As you can see, Harmony is not doesn't add anything to the game itself, but it allows mods to work from it. So we go to Files, and here, so it doesn't say it works exactly with 1.7.0, but it says it works with every version past 1.4.3. So 1.7.0 is past 1.4.3. Right, so we would click on manual download. And then there's two options here. There's the fast download, which you can use if you have a premium account with Nexus Mods. I don't, so I'm going to use a slow download. Right, so then you just save the file. And then while that's downloaded, it's all downloaded there. Then we'll go to the Eagle Rising and we'll download Eagle Rising as well. Again, you have slow download, and it's a bit of a chunky mod, so I might have to skip forward a bit. Slow download and save the file. So we've downloaded our mods, got our Harmony mod, we've got our Eagle Rising mod, and by this time I'm going to have assume that you have downloaded and installed 7-Zip. 7-Zip allows you to extract the archived or compressed version of these mods, which all mods that you download of the Nexus mods are, are compressed. And while you can use alternative um, extraction software, so while you can use alternative decompression software, so extract the compressed files, 7-Zip is particularly useful for one reason and one reason only, at least in terms of Nexus mods, is that it automatically unblocks any DLL files. Now I'll show you what that means in a bit, but it's, it's a bit of a, um, it saves a lot of time and a lot of manual effort down the line. So I would always recommend to extract your mods using 7-Zip. Right, so here we have our Harmony and our Eagle Rising mods. And you can see that they, we can open them using 7-Zip. And if you don't know, if it doesn't automatically allow you to open them, open them using 7-Zip, you simply go open with and then select 7-Zip file manager again. Okay? So let's open that and you can see it pops open like this. So now let's navigate to the modules folder of Bannerlord itself. So for those using the Steam version, you go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Found, find your Mountain Blade game. That's over there, Mountain Blade to Bannerlord. And then go to the modules folder. 
Now, this is where our native modules, the game itself, are stored, so that folder will always be there. Let's drag this to the other side there and put on downloads. Now, go to our 7-zip, our modules, there we go. And we simply, now if the, the, the home directory of the, the archive says modules, just open that modules folder and then take the Bandlord Harmony or whatever mod you have installed and simply drag it to the modules directory that you, you have for your Mountain Blade game. Easy peasy, there we go, Bandlord Harmony. And you would do the same thing with the Eagle Rising. So, as you can see, this one doesn't have the modules folder, so this simply drag CA Eagles Rising and drag it into the modules folder. So this mod is a bit chunkier than Harmony, it's about 4 gigs, so it'll take a little bit of time. Okay, so now that that is finally extracted, we should have our Harmony mod, our Eagle Rising mod, and as well as the native modules in the game. So at this point, we can simply load up our Mountain Blade to Bannerlord game, and you go to mods, and if, it, if you install them correctly, they should appear in the mods menu unticked which so if we want to if we want to enable the mods then we have to tick them all right but before we do that let's go back to the mod website so you can see here that this mod is quite detailed in the instructions it does give you some installation instructions so we installed manually so as you can see step four here says unblock dll files right so if we wanted to do that if we had to do that rather we would go into the mod go into the bin, go into the Win64 shipping clients, and you'll see all these DLL files, right? For instance, we'd have to right click on them, go to more options, properties, and then there would be a option here to unblock the DLL file or unblock file. But because we've used 7zip, we don't have to do that. Now, when you have just one or two modules, one or two mods, it's actually, it's not such a big deal to uh, unblock a, a DLL or two, but when you have a mod list that comprise of 15 to 20 mods, and uh, you have to unblock every single DLL file in each module, then uh, it gets very tedious. So using 7-zip, we, we don't need to unblock any DLL files. It's done automatically. So that's why I 100% recommend using 7-zip. Let's also go back to the menu now, and it says, load order example so this is important and you need to pay attention to this because the load order is um can make or break your mod list really so the answer is simply harmony at the top so let's check here harmony is at the top and we can see the ca eagle rising is at the bottom and then any other mods should be above eagle rising but we don't have any other mods in this one so it's fine so at this point we can launch the game and see if it works okay now that is not a native menu or native background so that means that the eagle rising mod has been successfully installed it even has this funny little uh, pixelated roman legionnaires as a, a loading screen and there we go generally if it reaches this point you're good to go it means your mod list has installed we want to double check it, we can, so new campaign. It seems the mod has worked, so we can see the Southern Imperium, the Western Imperium, and um, the Northern Imperium. So this is all working quite nicely, i.e. the mod has been installed, let's see the troops. What do we got here? Um, anybody? No, yeah, there they are, just takes a while to pop up. But Auxilia, Cohortalis, Tiro, all good. I mean, the mod is working, the mod installation has been successful, and um, you have now successfully modded your Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord game. Congratulations. And this, I hope it was helpful, and um, good luck with your modding. And remember to check out my Bannerlord 2 playthroughs to see just what you can do with mods. Thanks for watching, and see you around.